Hey, hey, what's up, people? We're back. I always do this thing, and you got, you know, you have to get your the stream set up and everything. Make sure your audio levels are good and your browser tabs are uh, what they're supposed to be on and all that good stuff uh, before we get going. So I guess I stood behind, behind the curtain long enough. We're going to get better at, you know, prepping that kind of stuff before the the video starts or the stream starts, I should say. But uh, yeah, glad to be back. It's been a few weeks uh, since we've been on the stream. so. Looking to get back on the schedule for the new year. I've uh, been, of course, checking out some new projects. If you follow me on Twitter, which you probably should be doing anyway, um, twitter.com slash Brandon T. Roberts. Still a good URL for that. Um, just checking out new stuff. If you follow me there, you've been uh, uh, seeing some of the things about Astro and Angular. Uh, new stuff in Angular also, and of course, uh, uh, new stuff in Angular comes new stuff in Analog. That's just kind of how it works. Hey, Donald, thanks for uh, being in the chat. And Hefesto706, thank you for dropping through also. Uh, and I appreciate that. It's uh, It's been a, a fun project to work on, and I'm glad to see where it's going. So looking forward to uh, keep that going. Uh, so yeah, the if you're on Twitch, you would have <laughs> gotten the uh, the nice notification. Try to come up with something a little uh, different there, um, but yeah, the it kind of hit me over the weekend that I was uh, building a, a meta framework, basically to write a blog post um, at a minimum, but not just a blog post. But that seems to be like the trend of what you tend to do. Uh, when you try to build these sort of things is you try to get people to a point where they can uh, build a blog or so not necessarily not necessarily build an app but something maybe a little smaller scale so that's what i did and i kind of landed on this uh, a little earlier as far as being able to support something like markdown for routes and because those are usually the quickest way you can get to uh, get some content on the page and things tools like astro and gatsby and even like the mdx format have made this super easy so uh switch to twitch and follow hey i appreciate that um gatsby astro and uh tools like that have made it a lot easier so i wanted to explore what that would look like in analog being able to use markdown as routes so we've landed that feature and uh, Mac P Dev, hey, what's up? Glad you're here. Uh, so I landed that feature and kind of moved along there. And so of course you have to throw, when you build a project, you have to throw it at things. So I kind of threw it at my own uh, blog and tried to see what worked, what didn't, what needed to be refined. And um, so yeah, we're gonna see if we can I've done some of the work there, so I'm going to see if we can finish that and get it all ready to deploy. And then we're going to do a, one smaller uh, example uh, from scratch. So if you're looking to build a blog with analog, it has a nice ring to it. Uh, we're going to kind of get into that. So um, here, I did want to cover one thing really quickly before we get into that and that is which I'm surprised there wasn't a um, a blog post to go with this maybe it's not that big of a uh, feature uh, for a lot of areas but uh, where is it maybe I have to bring up the tweet because that may be a little more context So this week in, we'll call it this week, this this week in Angular is uh, Angular 15.1 came out. And one of the big features from Angular 15.1 is uh, self-closing tags. So previously, 
uh, as you can see, you have you had to define this in your markup where you if you have a component, your opening clat opening tag and closing tag, and now you can just define a tag with a uh, a self closing tag uh, for your components, which has been a long requested feature, um, and I'm sure many much discussion has happened around that, and uh, and I think it's rightfully so because. Angular has always been about um, trying to preserve as much of the the HTML feel as possible, and of course, then there's the other side of this where there's JSX where you can uh, have these self closing tags. So it's kind of taking some of that that experience from using JSX and bringing it to Angular, but you still you're still doing things the Angular way, which uh, I think that's pretty par for the course. So, and it's been a lot of excitement about, uh, I guess, depending on where you are, excitement about how that works and what, uh, how you feel about that. So, uh, I know, um, Chow is, if I can type his name incorrectly here, uh, he has, uh, already been on the trail of, uh, switching to uh, self-closing tags. So if you want another example, Chow being the maintainer of Angular 3 uh, has already been working on seeing what self-closing tags can do for his markup. And as you can see, there's an example here of it can shrink it down a considerable bit. And, and this also plays into uh, using uh, inline templates and styles. Now I know how people kind of maybe feel about those um, but inline templates and styles are a thing and self-closing tags may make it a little, another step easier to get to where we can, uh, where people prefer inline templates with the self-closing tags. Cause there's not as much, uh, markup, not as much noise there. So, uh, definitely excited about that and may, may, may even use some of those today, um, in this, uh, cause I'm pretty sure there's some places where I can. Uh, clean up there also. Yeah, so I mentioned before, um, I have a blog at brandonroberts.dev. Of course, it has some previous, some content here already, but I haven't necessarily updated in a while because I've been more or less posting on Dev2 and linking to my blog. And like I said, I took some time over after uh, shipping the um blog with um, analog with markdown support. Uh, the next thing I tried to do was go into my own blog and see what that effort would take uh, to do that. So uh, if we go to the source code here, my blog is currently uh, built with Astro, which I really like. So um, uh, Astro is a static site generator, it also has SSR but it's really good about letting you kind of pick your tool uh, to what you want to build with. And I'd also in created an integration for Astro uh, with Angular components. Um, and, but this was, bef I had built the blog before this, but uh, definitely if you want to check out the blog, I'll link that in the, in the show notes also. But um, also, like I said, also wanted to see what that looked like uh, building a blog with uh, analog. So I, what I started to do was uh, at a minimum, see what, how you could start uh, doing that. Um, so I'm going to create a new uh, project here. Create a new window. And we're gonna come over here. And I'm just gonna create this uh, folder really quickly. Uh, so under projects here, we're gonna run yarn and create uh, analog, and we'll call this uh, my analog blog because we have to keep it keep it a mouthful, I guess. <laughs> uh, so we'll create that. 
and use the latest version of analog with Angular V15 and go into that directory and open that up in VS Code. Uh, so the setup here is pretty standard for um, an Angular application and also a V application and with some a few differences, of course, we have the V config here. Uh, this just has the config for the V uh, setup and the analog plugin is already installed through the template. And I'll go ahead and run yarn and get that. Going to install the latest packages. So TypeScript is happy. And um, yeah, we have our source folder. Uh, things are pretty standard here. The one thing that uh, we do have here is a main and a main server. And if you've used Angular Universal before, this will seem uh, kind of familiar. And um, but main is for the client application. And if you want to bootstrap your client application after the server side rendered area is there, and then you have the server server side application um, that render renders it with SSR. So. And we kind of use these things together to uh, render the application itself. Hey, Josh, what's up? How are you? Thanks for coming through. I guess I should do the thing where we uh, send out the tweet and say that we're live. So we'll hit that button there. And I will send out a tweet. Also, we're going to take a quick commercial break here. <laughs> you can play the the elevator music to yourselves uh, for a second, but this would be a quick win. And let's see. Set for live. And I probably sent out things on main.prod still exists. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe there is, I have, I don't use main.prod. I never have. Uh, main.server is actually mean something in analog because this is the server side render part of the app. But uh, main.prod, I don't, I don't use that. And uh, I don't, I don't plan on using that anymore. All right. I don't ever, I haven't ever had to use it, but um, I think it still exists because we, uh, want to things strip out things like uh, Indirect Store Dev Tools and Prod, so maybe that still exists as a file replacement. But yes, yeah, it was a trend a while back um, as far as being able to, like I said, take out, include things or exclude things from the production build. Um, store Dev Tools being one of them. So if you don't want it, like logging all your actions and things in production. So uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, going back to uh, the blog here, the um, we have our application here, stand, pretty standard Angular app. We have styles, we have our app folder, routes for file-based routing and analog. Uh, if you need API routes, you have your server folder there for those, uh, which are completely separate. Um, and I already already have a, a route here, so a uh, route here that comes with the template. So if we run npm start, and if everything fires up okay, we have our app here. Um, and this is just a pretty standard. Um, this is just a template app that you get out of the box with uh, analog with just a home route. So, and that home route is here uh, already wired up for you so that you get something, you know, out of the box um, there. So uh, next, uh, what we want to do is, um, like I said, we could support Markdown as routes. And so if we wanted to add a route uh, for, I usually go with the about.md uh, there. And I just say about me and um, let's 
say Brandon Robert slings gifts on Twitter. Seems like a good uh, thing to do there. Uh, so we may have to restart the, I want to try it first. Uh, see if I have to restart the, the dev server here. Uh, yes, and it seems like our route isn't registered yet. So we'll go ahead and restart that. And let's see, we'll see if they've got any extra ng serves running. Hey, a couple, nice. So we're going to kill a couple of those. And we're going to run ng serve. We're going to run npm start again. OK, so we should be picking up the route this time. So if we go to about here again, oh, of course. And like, oh, fail to uh, import marked. Yes, uh, that is true. But that does mean that it did pick up the route correctly. So in order to uh, use the markdown as route, we're going to install the um, install some packages here. <laughs> Chow, I see you in the chat. Thanks for coming through. We're not going to be hacking on ESM just at the moment, just yet. Um, but yes, to add block support, we're going to need to install a few things. The analog JS slash content package, uh, prism JS for, uh, syntax highlighting and the marked, um, for converting markdown to, um, HTML and the front matter package. So we'll see, uh, if. Once we had those packages and then we run npm start again, we'll, uh, and we'll look at making this, maybe think about adding a, a starter to the, the blog project or a starter to the, to the template app, um, uh, to see if that will help out there. So, um, So yes, this, um, if we add that to the template app and while we're, of course, we're going to get on stream and have fun issues. So we still have, maybe I will just switch to ESM. It might be, end up being easier, but no, we're going to clear that NPM start again and, uh, start up our site here. Okay. We've got our homepage working and we've got our account there. Okay. So if we go to slash about, uh, we're going to get a error with front matter. Okay. That's nice. So I just, uh, tried that. So we'll, Come back to that one. So I do just want to show what I have here before. Uh, let's let's look at the error really quickly here, and then does not provide a name export call it default. Okay, so maybe we can look into that really quickly because this may be, of course, a bug that shows up on the stream. So let's go back here, and let's look in the front matter package. Hey, Nia, what's up? Thanks for coming through. Uh, front matter. Okay. We got module exports. Okay. So let's see what our package chase on here. Main index.js. Of course, so let's see if we can um, tweak this some to see if that will help us out here. Uh, so let's go into content. 
weren't intending to hack on stream, but here we are. If that's not the, if that is to end up being the case, then we'll come back to uh, that because this is where our front matter package is. And it says it's doesn't have a default export. So let's see if we add that. Let's see if we got any leftover ng serves around. Looks like we do. Ng serves all over the place. Let's do a force, I suppose. Uh, but yes, I'll come back to my blog here in a second. And are we? Okay, let's just go back to npm start. No, I'm used to using yarn, so uh, that may be, there we go. What do we got here? Does not provide, guess we're still getting the default error. Okay. So, Let's, we're going to take that out for just a second and put content in here. And I don't know why, I don't know if this is a, maybe an issue with uh, V, because I did see a V issue that had the uh, lingering, uh, killing the process with control C. So we'll see if uh, that it still be, is an issue. And I'm just looking through the chunks here to see. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. Got temp dips. Index cache, that's cool. Okay, feet and angular. That part works. And we're going to get the. Okay, so we're still getting the default export thing. But I did not import it this time. So let's see what we have here. Try the things out. Can at least show that how how this kind of works. So um, the importing. <laughs> hey, Danny, what's up? Uh, thanks for coming through. We're doing some a small, small, small bit of live troubleshooting uh, just to be safe. Um, because I had tested that all this was working before. And of course, when we get on here, it uh, does something a little different. So we are looking really quickly to see what we are using here. Okay, so I don't have any imports there. Let's just comment this one out all together. And we're gonna start force again. We'll see if we end up on a different port. Yes. Okay, so we got a different, um, we got a different, different error. So that's progress, I suppose. Uh, we got a JIT error, but we're not using that. So let's 
So we're going to, okay, so we got that part in there. And I wonder why we're, let's do some tweaking here. Uh, let's go back to here and we're going to say optimize steps include js slash content and we're going to stop that and restart it Okay, we still got our home page here. Okay, so probably still getting the, okay, cool. So uh, able to make some progress there. So uh, we add that now, of course, we'll clean all this up so that the experience for a new person will be seamless, but uh, we'll work through this, but that is the provider error uh, because we haven't added our provide uh, content um, function yet. So provide content is a a function from the analog content package that will register a content renderer. And we want to use the uh, markdown renderer in the analog content package also. So we'll come on the, uh, both the server side and the client side, cause we haven't, we haven't turned on server side rendering yet. So, uh, then we have our, uh, app running here. So about, okay, cool. So. Uh, we have our app routes about.md and I created this about me page. Uh, have our routes dot route slash about.md. I created it in the page, Brandon Roberts links gifts on Twitter. And we're just kind of using the existing styles that we have here. Um, so, and the good thing is that we still get the reloading and everything, everything with the um style so a uh, reloading everything as far as development yo anthony what's up thanks for coming through we are halfway working through some of course on stream issues but uh building a blog with analog um i mentioned before that my current setup of course is oh what angular conf should you go to this year definitely ngconf um, and thanks for the, the underhand pitch there. Uh, ngconf is one you should definitely go to. It's in, uh, Salt Lake city, June 14th to 15th. The CFP just recently closed, but, um, definitely check out, uh, ngconf. Um, I think it's still the biggest, biggest conference out there. So. Looking for comps to go to for AJI. Okay, yeah, cool. Congrats on the new gig, by the way. Uh, but yes, the uh, NG Comp is definitely one to go to, the most prominent one anyway. And now that we're back here with our um, blog here, you can create a blog in, in a few different ways. Uh, you can just create a static uh, file here with uh, route. So I just have routes.about.md. And if I wanted to create other pages in here, I could write one for blog and um, and so if I create a, if I, well, we're going to keep this one simple. So if I, I'm going to delete this folder. And if we want to create a, a pretty straightforward route, we could create a, 
um, create a file here. Or if you don't, if you just want to like to basically drop a bunch of markdown files in here, I create a blog route. And one thing that is required in this setup is if you create a folder, then you have to create a parent uh, component for it. So I'm just going to create a component here for uh, selector, which so the selectors can be optional. Uh, so I'm just going to template. And before I always forget, uh, we do all standalone, all the things and imports uh, for things that we'll need. And so I'll export this as default class log component. And we're just going to drop a router outlet in here. And I wonder if the um, language service will help me. Hey, Vortex and Jason, what's up? Thanks for coming through. I thought, well, I think maybe that helps with our components and not directive. So we'll just drop the router outlet in there. So uh, what we can do here is we have our parent um, blog route and in here I can come in here and index dot md and I can say welcome welcome to my blog and item one item two and item three uh so like i said it's good that you can use these things kind of interchangeably um so Okay, we don't have any routes there, so we're going to restart our uh, server here. Five slash blog, and we have our. We're going to lurk and watch a stream on TV. Want to see this analog blog? <laughs> yes, it's been uh, a, an adventure already so far. But, uh, and these are just some leftover styles, but as you can see here, I am using like a mix of a regular traditional route for my parent um, here. And then I have a markdown file for just like the, the leaf route, as you would say. Um, and like I said, you could use these kind of interchangeably. So if I wanted to have a another route file in this uh, folder, uh, then I could do that uh, a TypeScript file in this folder. I could do that also. So that is, um, I mean, those two things alone, you can see how you could take these and build out pages um, or a particular, uh, like I said, you could drop all your blog posts in this folder if you so choose, so choose to, but what is going to happen is it's going to, of course, it's going to create a route for each one of those uh, things. And another thing I will add in here is that I can create, this also works for um, a 404 routes also. So if I wanted to create a route here, I could say, oops, uh, page not found. Let's see what we're getting okay so that's just a different thing we're running to there and let's see if we do npm start another right we're just going to go down the line of ports here <laughs> uh so we have that one and let's say i enter a bad page uh we could just throw a markdown file uh throw some content up here for that. So um, we definitely have more flexible, uh, has some flexibility there of how we can use Markdown as routes interchangeably with traditional Angular routes. Um, so yeah, so, but normally you would want to have 
uh, pages for you want to have a lot of markdown files, but you don't want to put them all in this folder because like I said, that will create a route for each, each one. So what we want to do is uh, lemon in a van. What's up? Thanks for coming through. Missed what was under the hood for unifying MD and other stuff. Uh, well, this is still just a angular app. Um, the part about it is, is that we collect the, we collect the angular or we collect the markdown files. So, and then we have a pre-built component. I guess that's kind of the, the secret sauce of it. This part of it is that there is an angular component involved but it just renders the markdown inside of that angular component. So if we find a route that is markdown, then we give you the route component that renders the markdown instead of, we're not necessarily rendering the markdown direct. We are rendering the markdown, but it's embedded inside of the component itself. So we can kind of look at the route tree here. And this is our 404 page. And we have our analog mark, the analog markdown is the component underneath that renders the markdown uh, as its contents there. So, uh, and then traditional angular routes um, that have selectors uh, will have their normal uh, selectors there. If you, if you put one there and like I said, you can embed those in line there. So you get a good mix of what you can do in either scenario. Now, there is a limitation of that in that you won't be able to, uh, this is one of kind of one of the strengths of MDX. Um, I also file the support, file the issue to support mermaid code blocks. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, I will say the one, I know this may be the next thing coming up. Um, uh, someone want to say, well, how about, can I do something like this? And, because this is just markdown, it's not going to uh, render any of that as a as an actual um, as an actual router outlet because that's just, it's just treating it as text at this point. So if I go back to here uh, and I have page not found, um, it's not going to render this. But I will. Uh, it does support syntax highlighting. So uh, we would get that uh, text there out of the box. Uh, and I have not added a theme for uh, syntax highlighting yet, um, but I could do that here. Um, so let me find the one that I'm using for my blog here. Prism Adam Dark. And we can just drop that in here and getting prism. Oh, okay. Prism themes. I added that, uh, there. So we'll copy that and we'll drop this in the themes folder. Maybe one thing on the code block is a copy button. Uh, yes, that would be nice. Um, Let's refresh that. So now we have syntax highlighting uh, there. And you could add additional uh, prism uh, highlighting, syntax highlighting things. So you're not necessarily restricted to just the ones that are, or just the plugins that are provided uh, in analog. So, and this is similar to um, Scully that offered the syntax highlighting also out of the box for a lot of this, these things. So, but what I was getting back to is, uh, the being able to, um, have a little bit more flexibility about blog posts is something that, you know, you're want to do with your, uh, blog. So we can come in here. And is there some things that analog will discover for you out of the box? Um, so if we go in here and create a new file called uh, 2020, oh, I'll put 2021, 2023. 
at 01-2012, my first post dot md and uh, we can name this my first post hello world and we can save that uh, there um, but like I said we don't have this inside of our route folder so how can we use that component um, to how can we use that component uh, to render a route for it so uh, what we can do is you can come into this folder and create a file and we'll name this slug.ts and we'll hide that for a second and we'll create a new component in here and we'll name this selector a post and standalone of course and our imports in case we need any and our template and we'll export this one as default class of blog post component and we'll have our uh, template here now the analog um, Pack content package does have a a markdown component that comes with it and we can use that um, component here for analog markdown and uh, what this does will also gives us a a binding for content that we can use and it will take that content and uh, we pass it markdown content and it will transform it into um, HTML that we can display so that way we can have a more dynamic uh, set of content and we'll also bring in the async uh, pipe here uh, for this uh, so one thing we can inject here is use making a content variable and using the inject content uh, function that's provided also by analog content and we can use that in our template and if effectively what this inject content does is uses the slug from by default it uses the slug from the route and we'll use that to get the files from the content folder and read those so just as an example if we go to uh, slash blog um, if we go to slash blog slash uh, 202301 12 my first post uh, then it will use this uh, to find the content that we've uh, added in this folder um, because we're doing already doing some of that uh, behind the scenes as far as reading the content uh, for those files so and it will give me an observable of that uh, string of content uh, from the markdown file so uh, let's save this and if that all is good then we can go to slash blog I guess I should just copy the name here for ease of use and if I didn't break anything uh, we have blog Page not found. Okay, let's restart our thing here again. They're probably going to get a new port. Let's see. 5178. We're going to keep a count of how high we can go with the ports. And we're still getting page not found. Did I put the right one in here? Let's 
look and see here. Of course, this is going to show me page not found. And we have our, our slug there. Slash blog. Okay, let's try. Let's name this one posts. Dot slug, and then we will restart here and see how many more five one seven nine five one seven nine blog posts. And we're still getting pays not found. So let's look and see. I don't think our, yes, the, when, of course this happens, uh, we're going to call this a stream uh, bug, but when I restart Vite, it's apparently not letting go of the, uh, the port. So, of course, we can clean this up by running some, looking for some ng serves. And we can see I have a few of them running here, <laughs> which is hilarious. So, if we go through and fill some of these. But yes, I could go through and... and kill some of those and then uh, it will leave me back on the default port, which is 5173. Um, uh, yes, I do have that uh, that script also to find those things that are uh, on those uh, ports. Yeah. First time seeing analog, are those blog posts lazy loaded by chance or would you store blog posts in Markdown in a DB once you have more of them? Uh, these posts are not lazy loaded currently, but we do, I am looking at how we can incorporate that. So, um, but yes, you could also use the, um, the mark analog markdown component if you had your own content that you were bringing in from a database um so that will work also so let me clear that uh but yes you're not restricted to um being a, having to use uh these content files you can bring in your own content and render them that way uh so Let's try to, we're going to move this post up here. And I'm not sure why we keep getting this. Server is no longer running. That's neat. Okay, let's uh, see how many more of these we have here. Okay, we're going to just go ahead and kill these and then we'll look and see if we can get the post running. Three, four, two. Don't want to kill the wrong one. Uh, five, five, six, two. Okay. Yes, I know. No such process. Okay, so uh, WordPress built on top of Angular. Hey, that would be something. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I've seen anybody do that, but um, we'll have to see if, uh, if that's something to look into. Uh, so let's run ng-serve. And we'll get back to our, we have our large error message here. That's fun. Okay. So let's go back to posts. Oops, not that port. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody try to um, run WordPress on Angular on top of WordPress, but it could be it could be a thing. 
So I restarted uh, after we cleaned up the the rogue things. I restarted the uh, feet server and I moved just moved the post to my top level um, component here. And um, so we're using the markdown. We're injecting the content, which is reading from the content folder. I have here my first post. Hello world. And we have here uh, posts, uh, my first post on the blog here. Now, of course, everything's centered because we're just using the template app, but you can bring your own styling and your own themes, of course. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, we can bring in some TypeScript and say import, um, provide content from analog.js slash content. And we got a nice page reloading and our uh, page there. So, oops, missed one thing there. And nice syntax highlighting. So, there you go. Um, so, the we have our uh, we have our posts um, and we have our content there. And like I said, you could also bring your own content if you wanted to uh, load in your data from somewhere else and just have it rendered through the the markdown content. So, and one thing that I will add is, um, like I said, we did have the issue with the front matter, but uh, we can try that here. So if I go to posts here, and let's say I want to add a title, add some front matter to my uh, post here. My first blog post. Um, right now, we would get the front matter as part of uh, the content itself, which is not what we want. Um, so what we could do is uh, use the uh, inject content and this will just be an observable of the content so uh, we could take this content and use the um, which like I said I'm not sure why this uh, wasn't working front here but we can use the front matter uh, use fm from front matter and we can use that to format the content here, uh, which will give us the, um, I'm just going to save this and then we can, well, I'll save this and uh, then we can wrap, I believe if this comes out correctly, it's going to give me like a body uh, tag uh, there. So, and object is possibly null. Okay. Not sure if I can, I haven't tried to do that in the template in a while. I don't know if that actually works or not. Or if I need to add it here. Okay. So if we go back to posts and my first post and this may be the issue I ran into um, earlier failed to fetch am I still server still running here looks like let's just restart this again Okay, looks like when I do just ng serve, everything is okay there. Okay, so we're still getting the object as possibly null from the compiler. Save that. And go to post. And probably still getting the error there. A sync pipe. 
<laughs> yes, I know. Okay, let's. We're gonna do this one. Um, what do I want to use here? Div ng if equals content async as content. And y'all aren't gonna forget. Y'all gonna let me forget to add my ng if here uh, for that. And this may give me the same error, but we'll try it anyway. No self closing tag. Oh my gosh, is this uh <laughs> just for Chow? Let's see. Let's see what version are we on here? It's fresh. I haven't thought about it. Animations. Okay, 15.1. So we can show off the new, the new hot stuff. Now that before we had our, uh, I wonder if you have to compile this with, um, with Angular 15.1. Probably not, but either way, we got self closing tags now. So we got post and we're still getting an error there and they failed to fetch dynamically imported module. That's fun. It's the self closing tags that did it. No, just kidding. Oh, it's probably maybe I may be getting an error with the the front matter there. Um, so let's see if we can take that out and see if it'll just uh, render something weird there. And let's go to our app component and we will add Let's go to our home here. I don't have any imports in here. So we'll add imports and a router, router link. And I'm just going to throw it in here at the bottom of the, well, let's do this. Let's take out the extra stuff. That way, if we get back to the home screen, home page, we have a nice link waiting for us. So router link, my first post. And we have posts. And this one slash that. Okay, my first post. Content resolver is not a function. That's nice. And yes, that one is giving us that one because we aren't getting any content in here. So this would just be content because we're not using the front matter. Uh, but yes. So all of that works well. So it must be something going on with the um, front matter. If I install the, might have been, I'm trying to think if I install the right one. Let's see. Extract matter. Yes, I believe this is the one I've been using. Uh, content front matter. Yes, it looks looks correct. Um, there. So, uh, of course, to we can either just take out the front matter, or we can just kind of wrap it in uh, comments. And now, no more front matter. <laughs> 2023, the year of Angular on desktop? <laughs> no, 
every year, every year is the year of Linux on the desktop. Always remember that. <laughs> every year is the year of Linux on the desktop, not Angular. Um, so Angular on embedded devices. Hey, I've actually done that before. So, um, I used to work at an IOT company and we built Angular applications, uh, web apps that shipped on the devices, the IOT devices themselves so that we could remotely connect to them and, uh, control the lighting. So, uh, definitely doable. And this was back in. Uh, it's been a few years ago now, but, uh, we were doing like hybrid angular JS and angular and, uh, all that sort of stuff. So it was in build in building automation. Yeah. The name of the company is called, uh, or is called synapse wireless. Um, uh, definitely a cool company that I was at for a while. Uh, me and Mike actually, uh, both of us worked there. My buddy, Mike Ryan worked there at one point in time. So, um, but yes, it was all industrial lighting, automation, that whole thing, efficiency, all that kind of cool stuff. So, okay. So, um, we have some posts and we have, um, we have some regular pages heard of acuity brands. Big lighting. Okay, yes, I do think I that name sounds familiar. I do think I have heard of them before. Um uh for that sort of in that in that industry. Of course it's been a while since I've been there, but yes. And let me check to uh I forgot of course thank you, Mac P Dev, thanks for the follow. Uh FSWX, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Uh Lithonia, yep. All those, the Lithonia sounds familiar. Uh, some of the other ones, not as much, but that could just be my brain and not the, the companies themselves. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a uh, big game hunting out there. Um, a lot of players, interesting stuff. Okay. So we have our posts and we have our, uh, we basically have our app together. Let's say you have, we have a minimal blog together and we want to, uh, pre-render some of these things. Um, so we can stop the, uh, server here. And um, one thing I will uh, show here is, uh, the, uh, pre-rendering, uh, pre-rendering. So we're going to enable SSR. Uh, an analog by flipping SSR to true. And uh, we'll also uh, set a flag in Nitro, which is Nitro is kind of the underlying server engine side of this that does the pre rendering. Um, but we're, we're going to make this more of a top level config uh, soon. But uh, for now, we can define routes uh, in here that we want to uh, render. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to copy this one and for posts, uh, nitro is using Nux. Yes, it is. And, uh, that's kind of how I found it. Cause I was, of course the, the, the choice is always to, um, is to build or to build or to buy per se, but in open source, you can just kind of build or you can uh, see what's available out there and kind of use some of that. So, um, nitro nitro is actually a very interesting project. And there was the learn with Jason actually earlier today, just did a stream with, uh, Daniel C Rowe, who is one of the maintainers of Nuxt and it uses nitro under the hood. And in my opinion, like nitro is the, one of the quickest ways to like spin up an API. Um, but it has a lot more functionality that, um, you can use also. It also has like file system routing, uh, for, um, you, you could think of it as like a meta framework for APIs. 
um, but it lets you do things like pre-rendering and file-based routing and server-side rendering and that sort of thing. So a lot of stuff baked in that you can uh, integrate into your project and analog does take use of that uh, in the project also. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do here is I just want to turn on a little bit of logging here just in case we have any issues there. But uh, let's go ahead and spin up the app again. And we'll see if we can. Let's see if we get a any issues here. OK, so now we're this is running in server side mode uh, now. So we're server rendering uh, this page. And all, the, all of our content is still there. So if I go and I turn off, if I disable JavaScript and I reload this page, um, so you can see here, I can disable JavaScript altogether and reload this page and we still see that our content all our content is there um, and renders as it as it should and this would be the case for uh, all of our pages my first post I can still link to these different pages uh, I can go to my blog page and all my content is still there uh, with no JavaScript turned on which is pretty nice for of course SEO and things and if we're building a blog you want all of the HTML to be there. Um, all the HTML to be pre-rendered so that you can get picked up by crawlers and things. So, and we can see in here in our console that we're running in, we're actually running this on the server also before shipping it to the client. Mm -hmm. So you get kind of the best of, you can get the best of both where you can server render the content and then uh, if you want to have some interactive pieces, of course, with an Angular app, you can kind of hydrate those pages there. Um, so you know that the server rendering works. So now if we run an ng build, I went and set up some routes to pre-render, uh, including the home route, the blog route, and our my first posts, my first post. So if I run ng build, uh, we're going to build our, this kind of happens in phases. We're going to build our client app and uh, build our SSR application and then pre-render uh, the routes and optionally build a server uh, if we wanted to deploy this to have it server render all the, to have a mix or server render all the time. So we have our this directory and a server in public. And as you can see here, we've uh, pre-rendered the pages uh, for the application itself. So um, all the HTML that we've showed before, uh, the home route, which just has to link to my first post, um, and our post uh, page, which has the my first post in it, and our syntax highlighting, and our blog page, which is all static. Uh, HTML all rendered, even with our uh, self-closing tags and everything with Angular 15.1, which is pretty nice. Um, all that is there and available. So we've gotten our, we went from just like spinning up an app to being able to define some routes with Markdown, uh, also define some regular routes in Angular and being able to turn on server-side rendering and, and pre-rendering uh, some of those routes so that they are uh, completely static. And then we still have our ability to, uh, what I, I didn't render the like 404 page or anything like that, but you could. Um, um, and we can pre-render those pages and still have our Angular application startup as needed. Or like I said, if JavaScript is turned off or crawlers 
want to access uh, that they can. And I said, all this is built into uh, analog so we can get that, uh, build these things and get them working out of the box. Of course, we're st analog is still a work in progress, so we're still working on bugs and things. So, um, so yeah, th this is how you can you know, start from a uh, new application, building a blog with analog, pre-rendering the content, and even look at the content, look at the application through uh, enabling server-side rendering. And um, going through the the rest of those steps to make that happen. So, um, like I said, issues aside, I'm really excited about how how it's coming together. And of course, if you're uh, of course if you use Angular and you're interested in that, you can like I said, build on top of these things and still get the the experience of using Angular and the components. And standalone components and everything else that comes along with that. So, um, and like I said, we'll continue to. One thing I will add is just using the Nitro environment, Nitro server uh, stack does give us some flexibility in where we can deploy um, this application. Also, the the built server version of it. So, um, so yeah, you can. Like I said we in. I didn't really show off any API routes, but those are there too um, that you can use if you want to spin up your own small API or use it in, interact with the database or things like that. So we'll clean up some of the, the paper cuts and uh, keep working with that. So, but yeah, thanks um, everyone for uh, coming through. Uh, we're going to switch over to here. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming through. Um, really excited to see. Of course, I'm I'm excited about it because, you know, it's been something that I think the Angular community has been wanting and looking for. So, and trying to extend like some of the functionality with building the blog and uh, things like that or building static site, um, but still being able to use the tools that you're familiar with, I think is pretty interesting. So. Looking forward to doing more with that and to keep it going. So if you see this uh, video on YouTube later on uh, and you made it through this far, or if you just scroll to the end, uh, go ahead and hit the like button. Leave a comment in the video also. Um, tell me what you think, what you think could be uh, other th cool things to add because there is some excitement in, around Analog with contributors and everything. So definitely want more people to see it and get involved. So uh, with that, um, chat, thanks for coming through. Uh, we're going to call it there and we'll come up with something on stream to do, uh, next week. Um, I will say that I am interested in trying out solid JS. So I may do that on stream, uh, one of these future streams. So we'll see how that goes, but, uh, for now, yep, we'll see you.